Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Fabuloso. Okay, good. I will admit Jenny came in a little cranky, but her attitude changed the minute that music came she on. She came in hot like a New Jersey housewife. Yeah, she was. I, I said something about make me a sandwich, and she was yelling so loud there was spit make, flying everywhere. Make your own damn sandwich. <laughs> Poorly. I'm in. I was. I'm in mom mode this week. Oh, I yeah. took grandkids to school. All right. Which I'm just out of practice. And with the puppy. Yeah, but Adam, Robert, and I had nothing to do with that. Well, exactly. <laughs> Did anyone offer to help me make me a sandwich? I, I am not part of this. <laughs> all right. Anyway, all right. I'm great. Happy to be here, guys. So uh, we're going over a super cool book today, and I'm and I'm not just saying that. Like I, I actually feel like. I wonder if maybe we're getting smarter by reading all these books or whatever, or maybe the older I get, the sappier I get. But this book is going to look so boring. It's called The Fred Factor. Okay, and it was, I picked it up. Somebody suggested it at the Coldwell Banker uh, Leadership Retreat that we were at. Oh, okay. And okay. I ordered it right there on the spot. Oh, yes, I remember this. And I bought okay, it. And, okay. and uh, I read the whole thing, well, last night and, and this morning. And okay. it's just so cool. So, you ready? I'm ready. All right, everybody. So, first off, uh, the first chapter is called Make Each Day Your Masterpiece. Um, and that's a quote from John Wooden's dad. You remember we did the Pyramid of Success, mm -hmm. John Wooden's yeah, yeah, dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this guy, Mark's, Mark Sanborn, he's kind of like a public speaker, motivator, that okay. kind of guy. And he bought a new house in the suburbs outside of Denver. Mm -hmm. So he buys a new house, and then all of a sudden he gets a knock at the door, right? And the guy, he opens the door, and it's a guy in a postal uniform. Mm -hmm. And the guy says, hi, my name is Fred. And he sticks out his hand, and he says, I'm your local postal carrier. And I just stopped in to introduce myself and welcome you to the neighborhood. And he goes, you know, kind of an ordinary guy, a little mm -hmm. mustache, um, you know, nice enough. And, and uh, he's like, oh, well, it's nice to meet you. You know, it's very nice of you to welcome me. And he goes, yeah, he goes, I'll be your postal carrier, you know, anything you, mm -hmm. you need or whatever. He goes, so what do you do for a living? And the guy says, well, I'm a speaker. I'm a public speaker. And he goes, so I travel a lot. He goes, As a matter of fact, you know, I'm gone like over 100 days a year traveling. Ugh. And the postman goes, no problem. I'll tell you what, if you give me a calendar and you let me know the days you're going to be out of town, I'll bundle it up and I'll hold them for you. He said, or, you know, I'll put as much as I can in the box without it kind of coming mm -hmm. out so that nobody thinks you're gone and robs your house or does mm -hmm. whatever. He goes, so I'll hold your mail when you're gone, you know, no problem. And so uh, he's like, oh, okay, well, what a nice guy, you know, mm -hmm. and, and so the guy leaves and all that, and um, he ends up going on his first, you know, speaking gig after moving into the new house, the, mm -hmm. the author does, and he comes back and his mat's gone out in front of his door, and he's like, what the heck? Mm -hmm. And he's like, um, he's like, what, somebody stole my mat, you know, and come to see, he sees it over on the side, and there's a, there's a, his mat is over a box. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden he sees um, Fred, the mailman, coming up and down the street. And he's like, hey, he goes, by the way, UPS left that on the wrong door down the street. So I picked it up for you and I put it on your porch. And Aww. I was like, oh, okay, well, thanks. That's mm -hmm. super cool. And so uh, he's like, wow, what, what a great guy. You know? And he goes, and then um, the next time he goes, I'm a couple weeks later, whatever, he goes, I'm out mowing my lawn. And uh, I see a car pull down the street and it's Fred and he's in his regular clothes. And he rolls down the window and he's like, hey, Mark, how was your trip? Because he had just got back from another trip, and he's like, "Oh, it was good," you know, blah 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 blah. And he's like, "Oh, cool," you know, whatever. And then he takes off and he leaves. He goes. So basically, this is a postal worker that kind of gives gold-plated service, mm -hmm. right? And he kind of ends up, for the purpose of this book, setting a role model for anyone who wants to make a difference in someone else's week. Mm -hmm. So um, he started using kind of examples of this postal worker in his speeches. So when he would go here, talk to a sales mm -hmm. organization or whatever. And uh, one lady said uh, that he was such a good example. You know, she said, I was depressed. I felt like nobody was paying attention to me. I was upset at work. She said, but I just thought, you know what? No one's paying attention to Fred. And he just keeps working and he keeps doing his stuff. And he keeps delivering the mail and keeps being nice to everybody. And uh, you see where I'm headed with this? Uh -huh. So basically, kind of excellence and quality should be the goals in every person, in every profession is what this book's about. And he said, literally, people have created Fred Awards now. So ah. we want to give out the Fred Award you know, to so-and-so, so-and-so. So this Fred thing has taken off. I love it. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, so Fred said, uh, or he was thinking about how cool this Fred guy is. He said, so he ended up leaving him a little present, this Mark did, in the mailbox for Fred yeah. for the, for, for the right. holidays. And Fred wrote a little letter put a stamp on it because legally you have to have a stamp on it. You can't put something in the mailbox without a stamp. Okay. And it said, hey, thank you for remembering me at Christmas. Hope I can provide, continue to provide you with excellence mail service. Sincerely, Fred the Postman. So he left that back in his box because he left him a little bit of a present. Mm -hmm. So I think you're, you're starting to get what I'm putting down mm -hmm. here, right? Mm -hmm. so, um, so, so that's kind of like where it starts. And 
basically it's an example of what we should do, but it's going to get better. Okay? So Abraham Lincoln started the next chapter, and it says, whatever you are, be a good one. Mm -hmm. So whatever you are, whatever you do, right. whatever your kids do, you know, and, um, I, and I'm going to share a couple other little things that I picked up from the book last night too. But okay. basically, he starts out giving four principles that he learned from Fred that can be applied to any, any profession at any time in any situation. Okay. Principle number one, mm -hmm. everyone makes a difference. Amen. It doesn't matter how large or even ineffective your organization is, an individual themselves can still make a difference. You can make a difference. Mm -hmm. So you could work for a shitty real estate company, but if you're a great agent, it's all about you. It's so true. Um, it doesn't matter, you know, again, how large, but um, a mediocre employer, right? And I'm, mm -hmm. that's not us, by the way. That's, mm -hmm. that's no. not us. Okay. A mediocre employer can hinder exceptional performance. You can choose to ignore it. And, and you know, so you can choose, the employers can choose to ignore someone going above and beyond mm -hmm. and not adequately recognize it or encourage it, which is something that we probably should need to make, mm -hmm. pay attention to. Remember, we give away the ambassador award every mm -hmm. year. It's from people that have that Fred factor. Right. Yeah. Right. So um, anyway, so my, my question is this, and, and there's a bunch of questions just to get us thinking about all this stuff that he wants us to think about, the author regarding Fred or your life. Mm -hmm. Do you add or take away from the experience of your customers and colleagues? Mm. So if you were to look at everybody you work with, Robert, Adam, do you, take, do you add or take away from the experience of your customers or colleagues? Do you move your organization closer or further from its goals? That's, you bring them a lot closer, by the way. You all do. Um, do you perform your work in an ordinary way or do you execute it superbly? So as a real estate agent, are you an ordinary real estate agent or are you superb in what you do? Do you go that extra mile, that Fred mm -hmm. factor? Um, do you lighten someone's burden or do you add to it? That's a good one, guys. And do you lift someone up or do you put someone down? So mm -hmm. nobody can prevent you from choosing to be exceptional. So those are the questions just to kind of start thinking about. Basically, at the end of the day, what kind of difference do you make? And one of the things you said in the book, and here's something that I thought was cool that all humans have in common. Okay. Every single one of us, we all have a passion for significance, mm -hmm. right? Yes. We all have a passion for significance. And where others might see mail as kind of monotonous drudgery, Fred saw it as an opportunity to make the lives of his customers more enjoyable. Mm -hmm. He chose to make a positive difference. So that's kind of how the book starts out. I like it. All right. So, um, so what do you guys think so far? Do you, you, you like where we're headed with this one? Now, I'm going to... This is when I actually called my youngest son last night because mm -hmm. I was so interested in this quote. Okay. The next chapter starts with a quote from Martin Luther King. Mm -hmm. All right, you guys ready? I want you all to listen to this. Okay. If a man is called to be a street sweeper, mm -hmm. he should sweep streets even as Michelangelo painted or Beethoven composed music or Shakespeare wrote poetry. He should sweep the streets so well that all the hosts of heaven and earth will pause to say that... that they thought here lived a great straight sweeper, sweet sweeper who did his job well. So I thought that was really, like that mm -hmm. was moving to me. It's, it's beautiful. You know what I mean? So if you are a street sweeper, and I look all the time, you know, like, I, I don't know about you guys, but I always forget to take my trash barrels out. And so I'm running out, like, in my robe in the morning at, like, 6 a.m. Are, are you serious? You don't have people for that, Chuck? Stop it. <laughs> Wait, that was my first thought. You don't All have right, people well, for this. Holly but... was running the trash cans out the other day. <laughs> oh, you do no, have people for After that. she made her sa after your sandwich. After sandwich. she made my breakfast, I'm like, hey, you better hurry up. I hear the truck coming down the street right now. <laughs> you need now. to put a Just reminder running. on your phone. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I do, but sometimes my ringer's off. So, okay. But anyways, and, and I saw a trash guy. He was ahead of me. He saw me coming out. He stopped. Aww. He backed the truck up. Mm -hmm. And I pulled him out, and he's like, and I'm going to tell you the truth. He actually dumped a blue barrel as if it were black because he had already been by with the other one. And he's like, I got you. And he gave Aww. me a thumbs up, and I was like, that is so awesome. You know what I mean? So, like, and I hope I don't get anybody fired that's for that. That's what I was, it stressed me out but a little bit. We didn't name okay. names. We're good. But I said thank you, and I took him. I mean, you live in Temecula, so. But, but think about it. I mean, he did not have to do that. But that yeah. made my day. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I want to read it one more time. So if a man is called to be a street sweeper, he should sweep streets even as Michelangelo painted or Beethoven composed music or Shakespeare wrote poetry. Mm -hmm. uh, he should sweep the streets so well that all the hosts of heaven and earth will pause to say that here lived a great street sweeper who did his job well. And I, I think that's something we really, either as parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, whatever, 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 you have to encourage these young adults, these kids, even 50-year-olds, whatever, whatever their passion is or whatever you're called to do, whatever job you get, 
find joy in that. It all doesn't have to be. Correct. It doesn't have to make you millions of dollars. Correct. And and that's that's the point. If it does, so, great. But so so Fred, so he's proof that there is no insignificant or ordinary job mm -hmm. when they're performed by significant or ordinary people mm -hmm. or extraordinary. Extraordinary. People. Yeah. Yep. Um, people give work dignity. Yes. Right. Yes. So I mean, and I, I have run into. I swear, I don't know how many times I've gone through a Taco Bell drive-through, uh -huh. and you can tell the people that it's very transactional. Yes. And then you can tell the people that are really cool. And I always want to offer them a job. I'm like, God, I wish I had a spot for mm -hmm. somebody like that with that mm -hmm. attitude that's super cool and talking to you yes. through the window and, you know, all that sort of stuff. So there really is no work that does not have dignity, what, uh, whatever it may be. A million percent. Um, there are no unimportant jobs, just people who un feel unimportant doing their job. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I don't know if anybody can relate with that, but um, I, this is a, another quote from... The gentleman that uh, is the founder, his name is B.C. Forbes, he found Forbes magazine. Mm -hmm. And he said, there is more credit than satisfaction in being a first-rate truck driver than a 10th-rate executive. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, kind of kind of cool. Yeah, really cool. Um, so, uh, and I'm just thinking, who are you? You know, like, when mm -hmm. you're out in the world, like, are you Fred? Are you making everyone around you, giving them that little, you know, extra exemplary service and mm -hmm. all that? Or are you just being very normal and transactional and moving on and ignoring people instead of engaging them and you have a chance to make somebody feel good? So um, he said a cab driver who is more can be more inspired by their work than upper level managers who seem to have lost their drive for excellence. I just saw some horrible cab drivers and some excellent ones we had last week. Yeah, exactly. But see the difference? Yeah. Some of them make you warm and happy and yes. great, and some of and, them it's and feel super safe. transactional. And then the others are like, ah, oh, get me out right now. Yep, yep. And we did, that was because we did work <laughs> with a lot of cab drivers last week. So the more valuable you are to others, the more value you create in your work or your interactions with others, the more value will eventually flow towards you. Mm -hmm. So if you are that positive person all the time, yeah, you know, or doing good things for others, it's going to come back to you. We don't do it for that reason, right? But you know, you do it because it actually fulfills you. But yes, faithfully doing your best, independent of the support, acknowledgement, or reward of others, is a key determinant in fulfilling your career. So, it says doing your best, not just hoping somebody's going to acknowledge me or do this or do that, mm -hmm. is the key to kind of having that fulfilling career. So that's just principle number one. And, and it is hard because actually it, for us, well, I, we'll call us salespeople maybe. I hate to, to use that word, but as realtors, um, we kind of do like a little kudos. Mm -hmm. We like an attaboy. I mean, who's kidding who? I like it when people tell me I'm pretty. I'll tell you later, but you interrupted me. <laughs> really? <laughs> and I, hey, Adam, I love you, man, but you are not pretty. <gasps> I'm just telling. He's not pretty handsome. That's not very Fred of you, bro. He's handsome. You're handsome. <laughs> oh, okay. How do you feel now? Yeah. I feel pretty now. Thank you. Yeah. I'm yeah. still, I'm not, I'm, I'm working on, I still like the slap kiss, the kiss slap. As oh, a, you so, do. But yeah. I'm getting better. You really you really do. And I don't think that's very motivational Monday of us. All right, fine. I'm sorry. You are pretty, Adam. I was oh, kidding. Oh, thank you. You're pretty too, Robert. Uh, yeah. Michelle has raised her hand, by the okay. way. Okay. Yes, Michelle. Oh, maybe she accidentally raised her hand. Maybe it was an accident. All right, so let's do principle number two. Okay. Success is no, no, no. I did raise my hand and I wrote it in the comments, but I guess you guys didn't see it. Oh, so, um, so you know how I always believe in going extra and above and oh, doing yes. above and beyond. So, so this weekend, unfortunately, I still had two houses to sell. They didn't sell last weekend. I was really sad that they wait, didn't they, sell. Wait, last they, weekend they went a whole weekend without selling. Oh my lord, Michelle, yeah. <laughs> what are we gonna do with you? That was not. I know, but listen, the market has shifted. We did, you know, I had offers on both of them that ended up falling through because of the stupid interest rates that kept going up. So, uh, so needless to say, I had to do open house on both of them again this weekend. And guess what? I had stagecoach tickets, VIP for $1,850, backstage, parking, whatever, la, 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 the whole severe. I finally said I was going to go to stagecoach. I've never been my whole entire life. I bought the ticket a year ago, and of course, that happened. So I missed stagecoach this weekend, but I do believe I've sold both houses for not just what they're listed for, but they're going to come in oh, way over asking. So my CETA listing, I've got a million seventy-five offer coming in today, and my Pilsner listing, 
Uh, Mr. Usad Mohammed Mozan, something like that. He asked me to write an offer today for him to double end Pilsner. So okay. I said I would be glad to. So, so, but yeah, I gave up my tickets and um, I stayed behind to represent my clients. And I did open houses, two of them. Um, yeah, all weekend long and I sold it. So, but you know, that's what you do, right? You just step up to the plate for your clients when you have to. And Sometimes, you know, like when you plan a vacation, that's when everything, everybody wants always, you. Always, always. If you're feeling yeah. slow in your business, all you got to do is plan a vacation, plan an event, and you will get busy. Yes. So, so thank you for sharing that. So, oh, Ray so, Ann. Oh, Ray Ann, go for it, Ray. Oh, she went away. Okay. Yep. There she is. Ray Ann. Uh, okay. With us? All right. So, uh, so let me just go on to number two while we wait okay. for Ray Ann. Success is built on relationships. So it used to be that a stamp, you pay for a stamp, mm -hmm. and that equals the service. Yeah. And oh. that was it. Okay. Right? But with Fred, for example, it wasn't that. So indifferent people deliver impersonal service. Okay. So you know how you call sometimes. You can call American Airlines. You can be calling mm -hmm. anyone anywhere. And you know the minute you get on the phone with that person, if this is somebody that genuinely wants to help you yes. or they hate their life and job. Yes. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. So... Service becomes personalized when a relationship exists between the provider and the customer. And I was thinking about escrow mm -hmm. because escrow is so transactional, yes. right? This is the information, blah, 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 blah. Whereas if people that are in escrow, and it doesn't matter if you're in sales or not, as you are relating with those people, that's going to determine you, how you feel about that particular organization or that particular yes. person. Robert, for example, when you come in and talk to him, He's very interested in trying to make sure that he can take care of your problem, whether it's swapping a motherboard, whether mm -hmm. it's, you know, whatever with a hard drive. And it's just the difference between taking that extra mile or making it transactional. Stamp mm -hmm. equals delivery. So a couple quick things uh, that I just wanted to uh, mention that were in the book. And this kind of has to do with leadership, but I think it's important. Leaders succeed when they recognize that their employees are human. Mm -hmm. Leaders succeed when they recognize their employers. Are, so you also, when you're doing that, technology succeeds when it recognizes that its users are human. Nah. And employees like Fred, the postman, succeed when they recognize their work involves interacting with human. So it's trying to take the transactional piece out mm -hmm. and putting the relationship pieces in because those are the more important things. It's all that matters. It really is. It's all that matters. It, it is. Now, it's going to get really good right now. Okay. Right? It's principle number three. You have to continually create value for others. And that goes for you guys as real estate agents especially. And it doesn't have to cost a penny. And I want to say that again. To be successful, you must continually create value for others, and it doesn't have to cost a penny. You complain that you don't have enough money, right? You don't have proper training. You don't have the right opportunities. In other words, you as real estate agents believe that your lack of resources is why you can't reach a higher level. Mm. But this business is not about buying them or marketing or sending them gifts. It's important and it's helpful. Mm -hmm. But think about what resources did Fred have? A blue uniform mm -hmm. and a bag full of mail. Mm -hmm. That's all he's got, right? Mm -hmm. And he left an impression like that. He basically mastered the uh, ability to create value for customers without spending more money to do it. And that's what you guys all need to be thinking about. Yeah. I think that's one of the big lessons is you can, you can replace money with imagination. You can outthink your competition rather than outspend them. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes. And you basically substitute creativity for capital and kindness yeah. for capital. Yeah, I, and I just kept thinking love. You know, you don't have to have money to give love at all. Agreed. Agreed. At all. So uh, it makes it easier, though. Right? I tell you. <laughs> well, yeah. you can make me a sandwich later, though. That Whoa. Much. Whoa. <laughs> um, so, so in today's economy, someone who only has a high school, who maybe didn't go to college, only has a high school diploma. Yeah. What okay. about it? Bring it. Hey. Bring it. Write Mark Sanborn. Okay, I didn't write the book. Um, should expect to be unemployed, uh, employed a few times in their career. Right. Never. The faster you try Never to solve the unemployed. problem with money, the less likely. So with enough money, basically, uh, it, it just talks about always be, if you are the type of person that has strong relationships with everyone around you, you're always going to find another job. And that's probably why I always found a job. Yeah, you're likable. Ah! You know, until you get to know you. No, I'm totally kidding. <laughs> but you're likable, and you have good, good strong relationships. Mm -hmm. So you called us up and said, I'm coming back from mm -hmm. the Carolinas. What can we do? Blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. And you know what I mean, right? Was it about that? It's the truth. Is it about that fast? Yeah. And we're like, oh, it's Chinny. She makes great relationships. Yeah. Right. So um, now it is true that with enough money, Adam, you know, you can buy your way out of a problem. Okay. I, amen. But the challenge is to outthink rather than to outspend your competition. 
Um, and the truth is we compete against our own potential every day. And I, I hate this quote. Okay. I love this quote and I hate this quote because it made me feel bad. Oh. The truth is we compete against our own potential every single day. And most of us fall short of what we are capable of doing or being. Because we're lazy slugs. Mm -hmm. And because we take the easy, lazy way out. Mm -hmm. So the truth is we compete against our own potential every day. And most of us fall short of what we're capable of doing or being. In Drives every aspect of our life. Isn't that the truth? Isn't that the truth? So, Ouch. But at the end of the day, Fred, the yeah. postman, has beaten the silent opponent that threatens his potential. Just you know, as it threatens us and in our mind. But that... And the biggest competitor that we all have, this one hit me last night, ready? The biggest competitor that we all have is mediocrity. Settling for being mediocre. Mm -hmm. And a willingness to just do enough to get by. Did anybody else's uh, dad always tell him, because you'd come home with your report card, I have a C, that's fine, I'm, it's a C. <laughs> it's average, you wanna be average? You're, you're happy with being average. That's and what then, your dad and used then you to say. and then you would say yes, and then you were in big trouble. <laughs> oh no! Well, you know, um, but yours I'll, didn't. Do, oh, you you got A's, huh? You didn't. Me? Yeah. Oh no? God, no. 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 I did not get A's. No. Okay. I didn't figure that out till later in life. That you're like, oh, I might be smart. Uh huh. But you know, I, I can do this. Not that I was smart, but it just it takes about that much effort. Uh, exactly. That's what. But I, God forbid we give out that much effort. And that's what my. If you would just try. Yeah. You, oh, there, Sonia, just try. Yep. Uh, Yep. Uh, okay, so I'm going to say that again. At the end of the day, Fred has beaten his silent opponent that threatens his potential, just as it threatens yours and your mind and your situation, that mm -hmm. the big competitor you really have is not someone else, but mm -hmm. it's mediocrity and being a mediocre person, a willingness to do just enough and you nothing know, more to get by. Just enough. I'm sorry to keep saying that, but we're all guilty of it. You know? And I told you, like, I want to write a book, you know, how to live a mediocre life. You know, I mean, because we all seem to Put do the it. forward to me. Yeah. Oh, I'll have, you'll write it for me? <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll do some consulting for you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Oh, okay, never mind. That's great. No, I want to hear it. Where no, are you going no, with no, this? No, no, Where are you going no, with this? No, no. Principle number four. Yeah. You are a talented dude. Adam, mediocre still. Adam is a talented dude. Do you agree? <laughs> he is extremely talented. What y'all see is half of his potential. Yeah, he's got some skills. Please tell me I'm pretty. And you're so... <laughs> Freaking Brad gorgeous. just texted me and told me I was pretty. Thank you, Brad. Oh, good job, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> Brad knows how to get his no, Brad bread butter. If Brad you're needs. on Facebook right now, by the way, leave a comment and Brad tell me I'm something. pretty. That's what the only time people tell you you're pretty. Oh, right. okay. <laughs> Number four, you can reinvent yourself regularly. Uh, okay, like it, Madonna. Right. Now, if Fred can bring oh, originality God, to putting mail in a box, um, what could you do with what you do in a job during the day? It, with your job, with your career, what could you do during the day? All he does is puts mail in a box. And yeah, he think of all the stuff him. we get to do. So what about reinventing yourself as a real estate agent? You know, what about being that spark, that light mm -hmm. bulb, you know, mm -hmm. that energy that walks away? And uh, it kind of, he asked a question. It says, some days you wake up tired. Some days you wake up fatigued. Some days you mm -hmm. wake up unmotivated. I know that's every day, Adam, but I'm talking about for a lot of other people, it's just here and there. So you wake up tired, fatigued, and unmotivated. <laughs> That's right. This is Motivation Monday. I apologize. Wait, I, I, before you forget, I, I'm going to interrupt because you went off on a thing. When you said that about being that light, um, Janet Perez put on her, um, she put, showed on her story what someone texted her. And it was, she did an open house, I think. I don't even know if Janet's on. But she wasn't salesy. She wasn't pushy. And it just said, thank you. I think their exact words were, thank you for being that light or something like that. And now she has someone who will probably use her for the next 20 years. Right. You know? Yeah, I love that. I so, love that. principle four, sorry. No, I love it. Um, so, again, some days you wake up tired, fatigued, or unmotivated. Mm -hmm. um, and when your life is at that low tide and all you want to do is go home, how do you fix that? What can you do? So, Adam, what do you do? When you wake up tired, fatigued, unmotivated, like what do you do? What do you do, Adam? I take my vitamins. Oh, okay. No, hey, that's something. It that's, actually helps. You know, no. I've been taking vitamins and exercising more. I feel a lot better. Yeah, but even if it's just mental, that's what you do to snap yourself out of it. Yeah. It works. Great. Absolutely. He's right. Okay. So okay. Um, every time he, so, and this is what he does. Every time he feels that tired and fatigued and unmotivated, he thinks about the guy who delivers his mail, uh -huh. the, the author. And he says, you can make your business as well as your life anything you choose it to be. And that's what he calls the Fred Factor. So by, by kind of moving through life, going that extraordinary mile, making people feel extra special mm -hmm. by doing that, that is the Fred Factor. By the way, we're only in Chapter 1. Oh, okay, wow. that is the Fred Factor. And, and did you think about where they live, too? Denver? Yeah. 
So it was freezing. Yeah. Good and Fred point. was able to pull himself out of yep. that and be, yep. a, you know, on, on task. Now, I'm going to read a quote that we've all heard a million times, and then okay. I'm going to open it up if anybody has any comments. But, okay. And, and I thought this was interesting. This is the beginning of the next chapter, so it doesn't really apply to what we just talked okay. about. But it's a quote by Winston Churchill. Okay. And it says, there comes a special moment in everyone's life, a moment for which that person was born. That special opportunity, when he or she sees it, will fulfill his mission a mission for which he is uniquely qualified, or she mm -hmm. is uniquely qualified. In that moment, you'll find greatness. It will be your finest hour. So really, by building relationships and going that extraordinary, you're going to have more opportunities for amazing opportunities to come in front of you mm -hmm. and to develop, to do what you're really here and supposed to do. I love that quote. I love Winston Churchill. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. so we got some Winston Churchill. We got some Martin Luther King. Hey. I mean, this guy's killing it today. He is killing it with the Fred factor. So, uh, and and. My, unfortunately, my monitor's not working, so I can't okay. see if anybody, you're going to have to tell me if somebody comments or anything. But, but the next thing is a Fred sighting, all right? So I want us all to spend the day thinking about Fred sightings. Okay. Okay, so this one guy, or this guy, this author, he travels. Mm -hmm. He loves Starbucks coffee, loves mm. it. That sounds so delicious. he went to the airport, and on his way to the airport, he spilled his coffee all over his jeans. And, you know, when you're going to do a speaking gig, you wear the clothes in that you will kind of wear out all that sort of stuff. So he spilled them all over his He went to the hotel and called to see if they had a laundry service. Mm -hmm. And the lady at the front when he called down to the desk said, unfortunately, we don't have that here. But I'd be happy to take your pants home with me tonight. I'm going to be doing a load of laundry. I'll wash, the, I'll wash your pants for you and I'll bring it back when I come back in the morning. Mm -hmm. So um, he said, okay, cool. And he took his pants down. And no, that didn't sound right. It didn't sound right. I was like, this is now He took his pants downstairs. He took his pants down. <laughs> Jesus, people. <laughs> He took his pants downstairs and gave them to her, and she brought okay. him back the next day. Mm -hmm. And he, Talk about trust, too. Right? Yeah. And um, so, you know, obviously, he ended up writing mm -hmm. a letter to the management and all that stuff about how great she is and mm -hmm. going that extra mile. So the next one is a funny Fred, okay? And a funny Fred, so pay attention for funny Freds, too. Okay. So there was a female captain on the plane ride, and, and she has said a whole bunch of things. But, you know, mm -hmm. you know, have you ever heard those captains that are over the loudspeaker? They're just hilarious. Yes. And you're like, did he say what I think? And, and this one, she said, uh, if you're having a hard time getting your ears to pop, I suggest you yawn widely, she began. And if you're having a hard time yawning, ask me, and I'd be happy to tell you about my love life. <laughs> All right. But, but he's just like, that's uh, a funny Fred. She did yeah. not have to. And she said, and the whole plane, mm -hmm. the, uh, the whole plane laughed, you know, mm -hmm. so... Really, that's kind of a funny Fred, somebody that like brings a light or something fun to that right. particular situation. So yes, Adam. I'm the funny Fred, I realized. I'm a funny Fred. Oh, bless his heart. Bless my he heart. He thinks he's funny. I think I'm funny. <laughs> All right, never mind. Looking. <laughs> Looking. <laughs> <laughs> he's pretty, okay? I am pretty, and I'm funny. Uh, yes. Here we go. Here's accountable Fred. Oh, so okay. Keep your eyes open for an accountable friend. All right, that's not okay. me. So uh, no. it's, home, it's Homeward Suites, right? And which is because, again, this guy's constantly staying in hotels, okay. staying in the Homeward Suites. And it's Father's Day. Hmm. A lady calls in, and she's talking to the gentleman up front, and he's kind of watching all this. And she says, um, he's talking to a gentleman named Jack. That's the guy that's working up front at, okay. the, at the home. And she says, you know, I wanted to order breakfast for my husband. He loves pancakes, eggs, and bacon. And Jack said, well, they don't serve that here. And um, she said, oh, okay, well, um, you know, my daughter and I are here on the phone, and we wanted to figure out how to make sure this is before, you know, yeah, yeah, you could order DoorDash and all deals that on stuff. meals and yeah. all that. So, so anyway, so when Jack got off at 6 in the morning, he drove to a nearby restaurant to pick up the meal. Uh -huh. He also bought, brought a, bought a card and a crayon and said, uh, because the little girl was on the call, mm -hmm. said, happy Father's Day from your little girl, wrote it in crayon, put it inside an envelope, brought breakfast, and took it up to the guy's room and said, this is from your wife and daughter. Aww. Happy Father's Day. So he was just astonished to have such a grateful guest. Mm -hmm. But that's called the Fred factor. So when we're talking about look for Fred sightings, it's things like that. Mm -hmm. And I can't tell. Is Sonia on the call? Yeah. Sonia. Well, she was. I don't, yeah, know, if, she's I don't know if you're here on the call. I can't see anybody today. My, my computer is out. But any feedback on any of this stuff? Your 90-year-old iPad? <laughs> it's called being frugal, okay? <laughs> frugal or tight? Uh, Never mind. Look who's talking. What are you talking about? You can't talk about that. Sonia's cheaper than I am. I don't know about that, but close. Ah, I w I, really? Okay, that's an interesting comment. Just Very kidding. good. What do you got? Hey, no, it's all good stuff. I, it really is. And where my mind is going is how as we as agents can go that extra mile. I mean, we think we do, but are we really? I just kind of like to hear what people think of 
what is going on while above and beyond what is normal? Well, I mean, I, I, I think of Janie Krasafi. Mm -hmm. And do you remember, uh, Sonia, how Janie, she goes to antique yeah. stores and she goes shopping and whenever she does, she actually looks at things that remind her of her clients. So they might love, you know, um, whatever, scarecrows. They might love this mm -hmm. or that or whatever. And she's always buying things that are applicable to that client. That is a Fred thing to me. Mm -hmm. To think that somebody got me something that is something I'm really interested in, you know, mm -hmm. a Beatles, you know, whatever. I mean, anything at all. And Janie's pretty good about that. Anybody else have anything that you guys can think of, of people that have gone above and beyond for you or that you've gone above and beyond for your people? Canceling Stagecoach is a big one too. Yeah. yeah. If you could also leave that in the comments on Facebook, if you've met a Fred, um, that, yes, we'd greatly appreciate that too. Yes, that would be fabulous. And if not, I have the next Fred to move on to. Okay. Let's do it. Do right. it. The next one is called. So we talked about an accountable Fred. Mm -hmm. We talked about a funny Fred. Mm -hmm. um, so another Fred sighting is a generous Fred. Okay. So he was looking back. You know, as he was writing his book, he's looking back to the Freds that have been in his life, and he said, you know, one time I did not have enough money for a cab. He mm -hmm. said, and I literally lost my wallet. And he said, and I had mm. to get somewhere. Mm. And he said, and I was talking to somebody at the hotel. I said, can I put it on my room? Can I do this? Can I do that? Mm. And the guy said, you know what? Hey, I'll just pay for it. You know, and he pulls out his wallet and he goes, um, he goes, really? And he goes, yeah. He goes, well, if you loan me 20 bucks, I'll mail it back to you. And he's like, no, 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 here's 30. And he goes, oh, okay. And he goes, this is just a guy working at the hotel. Mm -hmm. And he goes, so we exchanged addresses and I promised to, you know, send him the money when I got home. And he goes, but I could have disappeared. Mm -hmm. I could have never shown up. He said, but this guy just literally said, here's 30 bucks and here's my address. Just mail it to me. He goes, that is the definition of a generous Fred. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, you kind of know that the, the way to move through life joyfully and successfully is by focusing on what you give rather than what you get, right? And he knows that you don't do things right because you, you know, you have to, but because you want to. And it's just the right thing to do. So doing the right thing isn't an obligation, it's an opportunity. And there really is opportunities, right? Like to be mm -hmm. a Fred. So um, next is a famous Fred. Um, is and this you, Chuck? Is that famous Fred? Yeah, I, you famous I mean, Fred? I, I've been called worse than a famous Fred. So, <laughs> so um, there was this kid named Colin, and in the 1950s, he used to show up at the Teamsters Hall looking for work. Okay. And he would do and take the dirty jobs that no one else would take. Mm -hmm. Like, and it was all like sodas and all that sort of stuff. And he said, one of the dirtiest jobs you could ever do is cleaning up soda syrups. Oh. It's disgusting. And he said, it's hard, it's, you know, all that stuff. And he said, and, and this kid would always take the jobs doing, cleaning up the soda syrup, because uh, number one, it was available, nobody else wanted to do it, but he was willing to do whatever it took. Right. And so he was invited back the following summer, and so he, he actually ended up getting a great job by doing the dirty jobs that no one else was willing mm -hmm. to do. And he actually ended up writing a book later, and in his quote, he said, all work is honorable. Always do your best because someone is watching. He wrote that in his later memoir. So all work is honorable, mm -hmm. always do your best because someone is watching. And years later, uh, the world watched him, can't wait Be to know who it because is. Because Colin Powell served as the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, ah! you know, leading the Gulf War and establishing himself as a champion of education, and was selected by George Bush to be, obviously, the Joint Chief of Staff. So, you know, that. But he that, spoke at a car event once. He did, uh, Colin Powell? Yeah. yeah. I sat him when I, I worked at a convention, and I, I got to sit him at a convention that I was working one time. Wow. Which is pretty cool. But I always wanted him to run for president, actually. But Me whatever. too. But, he was too smart. Yeah. He's like, what? <laughs> I don't want those problems. Mm -hmm. So that's a famous spread. Um, so. Basically, it's, uh, you know, it's one of the other things, uh, and I want you guys to be thinking about this, and this could be you, but another Fred sighting was uh, one of his friends went to the movies, and she forgot her money. Mm -hmm. And so when she got up to the thing, she realized she didn't have her money, and the lady said, here, here's a ticket. Just bring the money in next time you're here. And she's like, oh, my God, thank you. So she goes in the movie, and as she goes and sits down, the same lady that was working up front came over and brought her a complimentary soft drink uh. and popcorn. And so, you know, he said, how often do you think my... Ago. He goes, how often do you think my friends go to that movie theater now? You yeah. Know? So wow. that's kind of like you know, another kind of Fred sighting. So, and I was thinking about inside this company, mm -hmm. inside of our organization, mm -hmm. how many Freds are in here? And can you think of any Freds? Anybody that you guys can think of that goes above and beyond to make you feel good, to give you that little pat on the back? And Actually, Chuck, you're a Fred. You know why? Why? When you first hired me uh, in 2016, you saw my glasses were all torn up. I had no money. You gave me a check that day to help me buy a new pair of glasses, and I will never forget that. It was well, very aw. sweet of you. Thank, thank you, Chuck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I like to tease you, but we all love Chuck here, okay? Ah, He's a good friend. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I He's appreciate a good that. Um, but so, so who else can we think of that will go above and beyond? 
Jenny, you seem that type. You know who really does a lot is Margaret. Well, that's what I was going to say. And what another speaker said this last week was, you know, you, you, when you walk in, you, when your people walk in, so when your clients walk in, you should be as excited to see them as you are as your grandchildren and vice versa. Yeah. And when we walk in, Margaret does give that face hmm. of, you're here! Yeah. <laughs> Yay! Yep, yep. Even if you're going to get scolded, she at least starts out nicely, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, she's like, don't get on her list. <laughs> don't get on her list. <laughs> yeah, can, can anybody else think? I mean, um, who else goes above and beyond? You know, I mean, and Jenny, I think you That's do it. too. Well, I think we all do, and that's why I, I think we all do, and that's why we're here, and that's why these agents are here. Mm -hmm. I think because they all are Freds. Can you can you think of anybody, Sonia, or anybody else? I can't see who's on the call, so I can't call anybody out. But can you guys think of anybody else, other agents that maybe go above and beyond to help you? Those that are willing to to help you with your business, those mm -hmm. that are willing to share things, um, you know. Again. Jamie says Teresa is a Fred. Oh, I think uh, a lot of people would say Teresa yeah, is one. Yeah, she is. That makes sense. A lot of people would say mm -hmm. that about good Teresa. Job. Good job. Good sure. call. That's good why call. Her, her mentees love her, because they know how much she cares. Mm -hmm. She cares. Yeah, so. You um, know who else I was thinking of, because uh, it's related to real estate. This is such a service industry, and we tend to forget it, but you remember Tom Sorge from Kivit Teeter? I do. He was talking about how he will... If he doesn't answer his phone or call you back within an hour, call the police. And mm -hmm. he said another thing where he's like, one of my clients said they were hungry. They had to go look at a house. So he asked him what he wanted, and he went and picked up McDonald's for him. Right. Like, and it just, we, we, this is a service industry, you know? Tom is one of my favorite people. Tom and I have a great, that's, Tom, uh, is, Tom is a pretty cool guy. Yeah, he is a cool guy. He mm -hmm. is a cool guy. I like that. Um, so, okay. So how can we get more friends? Be a oh, friend. Liz Allega also said Melissa Flanders is a friend. I would agree. Uh, Melissa does. She makes everybody around her feel good. She does, and she is actually on the call today. Hey. Melissa is? Uh -huh. Hey, look at that, Melissa. You got a shout-out. Mm -hmm. And you, those of you that didn't get a shout-out, maybe you're not a friend. No. Oh, what? All right, okay, I'm sorry. Got a little worked up. All right, so, um, <laughs> so one thing seems common to all human beings, right? We talked about that, the passion for significance. So the unhappiest people of all are people who do their jobs because they need the money. And why not do a job because you love what you do and not because you need the money? So even if, and, and that's what I keep coming back to, and that's why I called Ryan this morning with that Martin Luther King mm -hmm. quote about the, or last night about the street sweeper, is because, um, you know, like he's in the Marines and sometimes you get down or you don't like your, you know, the people that are above you or whatever. Or below and, you or with you. Yeah, and, and you know, there's no excuse to ever half-ass anything. And, and by the way, he's not half-assing it. I just wanted no. to remind him. Right. That and, and everybody, that whatever you do, whether you are working at, in the infantry or whether you are working at Macy's or whether you are you know, uh, working for American Airlines, you have an obligation in this life to leave a stamp. And that stamp is the Fred factor, which mm -hmm. is going above and beyond for people. And uh, I, I was going to mention, did I mention last time about that meeting with Mike Carter, the owner? And I, w I wanted to share this with you guys real quick because I'm thinking of a Fred factor. So the guy that owns the Coldwell Banker in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Mm -hmm. He was doing an overview of his company. Okay. And he was telling us all the different things, the parking lot parties was and the this and the that. Was this stuff that wasn't supposed to be discussed outside anywhere? No, not this okay. piece. <laughs> and, but but the, the line that he said in there is, be the first to call. Yeah. And, I, and I thought this was very interesting because for a lot of really salesy people, probably like you and I, Jenny, and a lot of you guys on this call, I don't feel comfortable if there's a tragedy calling people. I like hide. I'm a little bitch because mm -hmm. I'm so sensitive and I, I kind of have that impasse stuff where I take on what they're mm -hmm. doing and I'm a vegetable. Well, he was like that too until finally he decided that he's now going to be the first one to Ugh. call. So anytime there's a tragedy, anytime mm -hmm. there's an accident, anytime there's health issues, anytime something happens to anybody, he's the first one to make that call. And he said, people always appreciate you being the first one to make that call because it shows you care. Yeah. And you know, they will remember who was there when, time, when the times are down. Mm -hmm. That could be somebody getting a divorce. That could be a tragedy. It could be anything. So mm -hmm. be the first to call. And I won't forget that one. Yeah, that's good. I think that's really a good one. Really good. So, um, all right, so where were we? So, by the way, convert the job into something you love. Figure mm -hmm. out a way. So if you're in real estate and you're thinking this might not be for you, fix it. Mm -hmm. Convert it to a way that you can start enjoying it. Go that extra mile. Maybe you deliver things to people that's touching to them. Yeah. Um, so don't necessarily go do something different. And I was thinking, because we always tell them, maybe it's not for you. Right. Maybe it's their attitude. Oh, for sure. Well, that's why I always say about open houses, I wasn't good at them. 
I didn't like them because I threw a party and nobody came. It was all my <laughs> fault. It was all my mindset. If I would have put my signs up being, oh my God, so many people are going to come. It's going to be so much fun. But that's why we can't put our negativity on anyone else. Like, yeah, they may not be doing something and then they do an open house and it's the best thing that ever happened for them. Right, right, right. True story. So, uh, and it talks about enjoyment versus misery, mm. right? So you choose in your job mm. and in your career. Yes. We've gone to Taco Bell and you can tell the people that are miserable to be there. Mm -hmm. And you've gone to Taco Bell and you can tell the people that are happy to be there and they're interacting with everybody and they're working mm -hmm. the window and they're talking to you and they're, they're making mm -hmm. the best of it. And I, I don't just mean to be picking on fast food, but I'm just mm -hmm. saying like, that's the lowest paying of the jobs, right? I mean, mm -hmm. it's kind of where we start. So the kind of the message in the book is it's harder to be miserable, negative and insincere than it is to be happy, positive, and genuine. It's harder to be miserable, negative, and insincere than it is to be happy, positive, and genuine. That's 100% true. So just be positive, own it, I know. love it, do it. Yeah. You know? Most people think they get in, in life, ahead in life you know, in other ways, but true success is having fun uh, with your work and doing the best work you can and having that be the top of your list. You know? And yeah. I'd say we do the best we can. Oh, here. if you're not having a good time, what is the point? Right. I mean, and yeah, like, we're gonna cry sometimes. Sometimes you're gonna have stress. But if 90% of the time it should be enjoyable and fun, that's when I think you know it's not for you. Mm -hmm. If you're not having fun? If you're not having a good time. Yeah, well, and that's part of the culture that we try to promote here mm -hmm. is we try to make sure that everybody's having fun yeah. you know, and enjoying what they're doing. And that's what this mm -hmm. show's all about too, right? Yeah. So do the right thing for the right reason. Um, if you expect praise and recognition for doing it, uh, it's seldom going to come. Yeah. You know, if you're motivated because of the thanks and praise, you're often going to be disappointed. So do the right, you know, do things right knowing that it's right, and praise is just the icing on the cake. But being able to carry yourself around, you know, lighting up the room and making other people happy is, is key. By the way, does anybody have anything that they want to throw in? Because if, uh, if People if, have been writing stuff. I can't see it. So. I know. Um, basically, they're just saying how great Jenny and Margaret are. Nothing, nothing at all about Chuck. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Hey, they're there, saying there, there always has to be, uh, what's the character called? Oh, yeah, 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 there's got to be. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just kidding. Daniel Todd just, just you know, um, saying everyone, Nancy, so thankful for all of us. Um, Elizabeth said Robert is definitely a Fred. He's always helpful hey, and hey, funny. Hey. Eddie Zellers from West says, I want to be more of a Fred. And Aw. Brad, yeah, I love that, babe. I love that. Bradley said, uh, Brad Morton said, uh, Lori is a Fred. Aw. Lori is a Fred. Lori is a Fred. Fred That's in. nice, Brad. Thank you guys all for your comments, and please, please make comments. So, so basically, the next section is called Everyone Makes a Difference. Mm -hmm. All men and women matter. You matter. I matter. You know, it's the hardest thing in theology to believe, you know? And yeah. So another story that he did that I just wanted to pass this along for everybody is this author, Mark, he saw a cab driver who was taking a break, and they were walking up to get a cup of coffee, and he kind of stopped him, and he says, hey, I asked if she would like some coffee, and she said yes. And I said, do you like anything in it? And she said, no, I like it black. And he mm -hmm. said, that's my kind of lady, you know, likes mm -hmm. her coffee black. He said, so I brought her over a coffee and she started digging through her purse for change and, and money to pay for it. And I said, no, 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 this one's on me. Have a great day. Mm -hmm. And he said, and then I just started walking away and I looked back and she just was just confounded. Like her mouth mm -hmm. open, holding the, the cup of coffee in her hand. She goes, he goes, it was $1. And he goes, but it was literally the best part of my day. Yeah. So that's pretty cool, you know? Um, so, lesson there, right? Okay, so another thing it talks about is, um, you know, if you, you don't have to buy people things, you don't have to do all that sort of stuff, but it just talks about the power of a smile. Just smiling at people. They'll mm -hmm. always smile, generally smile mm -hmm. back. You know, so, and basically everybody makes a difference, right? Teachers, pastors, all these different people. But what about us? Like, mm -hmm. what kind of differences are we making on the planet? You know, and if, if uh, you feel that your career is not something that is as impactful as a pastor or a teacher or whatever, it can be. Oh, yeah. You know, and it's called paying attention to others and giving them respect that they deserve, politely serving them, you know, in contrast to neglecting, criticizing, and belittling, belittling mm. people. So um, anyway, so basically live your life through Fred-colored glasses. Mm. You know, cumulatively creates a lifestyle that becomes apparent uh, to anybody paying the slightest attention. So if you are that person all the time, they're going to notice you. And as they notice you, it's going to be an example for them to do to others. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, all right. So let's see what else we got. So there's three difference, difference-making strategies. Um, number one is identify when you'll make the difference. So at every opportunity, do it when you want to and when you can. So mm -hmm. identify when you can make it. This looks like an opportunity that I can do something really nice for people, for okay. somebody right now. Number two, um, targeting the people 
with who you want to make that difference. And it'll list out a few. Number one is customers, mm -hmm. right? By going above and beyond for your customers or clients, right? We talked about mm -hmm. the difference. There's the easiest application and the quickest payoff. You'll instantly get their attention. And you mentioned Janet. Mm -hmm. Janet said, thank you for being a light. She didn't, mm -hmm. wasn't being salesy and that mm -hmm. sort of stuff. Um, unwavering devotion is what you'll receive if you do that with your clients. You know, like when Janie does what she does for her people, mm -hmm. right? It's not uh, having commission breath. They don't have commission breath. They're literally there to help and to serve. That's the mark you want to leave. Online. Yeah. Uh, family. Um, how often do you make that difference and go above and beyond and do something for your spouse? Ooh. Make or me a sandwich. How, uh, uh, stop it. How often do you go above <laughs> and beyond for your kids? It was really stupid, but I'm all hooked on this, this uh, you know, Hitler's inner circle mm -hmm. of evil show I'm watching right now on Netflix, which is fabulous, by the way, but it's like okay. eight episodes. And I'm watching it last night, and Holly came up, and she just, like, put a blanket on me. And I'm like, oh, that's sweet. What do you want? And she was just being nice. I'm like, hey, Fred moment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I had the book mm -hmm. at the same time. Um, so you'll instantly get their attention and their, you know, uh, for your kids, too. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what have you done for your kids? Whether it's a text, mm -hmm. whether it's, um, you know, some, something that you know that they love, that you love them. You know, something mm -hmm. a little above and beyond that you that rarely experience. Like, what's the last amazing Fred thing you did for Nathan, Adam? You're going to get me in trouble. <gasps> What'd you do? No, you did something nice last night. What'd you do? Last night you did something nice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't very Fred about it. What'd you do? We made filet mignons last night. And, nice. like, you got to, like, you know, medium rare. And I, I brought his back, and he's like, it's still bloody. So I had to put it back on the grill, and I complained about it. So it's, it doesn't count. Wait, you're saying because you had to put it back on the grill, that's your Fred moment? No, I, I thought he was being nice because he made a beautiful dinner. Like, oh, it was yeah, a beautiful well, dinner. Uh, yeah, I mean, basically my relationship with him is make me a sandwich. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just joking, people. All right. Just joking. Okay, all right. Yeah. Robert, when's the last Fred moment? What did you do for your dad this weekend? Uh, I tried to fix his transmission. And how much time did you spend on that? Uh, about three, four hours. Woo. Fixing his dad's transmission. I mean, that's pretty awesome. And anything else you did special for anybody this weekend? Um, not offhand, no. Okay, all right. Well, stay home, play with the dogs. Maybe you should do a few more things. All right, all right. How about you, Jenny? Um, I'm watching Jeez. my grandchildren for seven days. I think. Seven days? No wonder you're cranky. <laughs> 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 He's been calling her cranky all day. She w she came in I'm like a. I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> on so little sleep. All I right. require so much sleep. You wanted kids. This is what you get. I did. I wanted kids, and I wanted the puppy, and I get everything I want. And be careful what you want. Be careful what you ask for, because the Lord will provide and give you everything you ask for. Yes. All right. So, so let's talk about the next important thing. So we talked about customers, mm -hmm. and we talked about family, right, guys? Mm -hmm. The next one is your boss. Treat uh, your boss like he's an incredible person, or she's an incredible mm -hmm. person. How about them apples? Adam? That was actually in my job description. That's weird. <laughs> yes, exactly. Wait, we didn't ask you what Fred thing you did. Yeah. Wait, wait. I'll bet you'll notice a difference in the relationship, Adam, <laughs> if you treat your boss like an incredible person. <laughs> you know how big my boss's ego would get? <laughs> by, by we got to keep you in check. If you don't get a, an incredible difference or a better relationship, look for a new boss. Uh, <laughs> oh. Mm. I know. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. I want to know your Fred thing. This week. Um, for Holly. You know what? That's all she gets is Fred things. Oh. Like 24-7 all day. Like, I want to come back as her in my next life. Really? That's, yes. Yeah, I really do. Anyways, all right. So, uh, number four. She deserves it. She did a little tap dance with it. <laughs> Hello, my baby. Hello, my dog. Don't be calling on me. This isn't about me. It's about you guys. Oh, okay. I forgot. Teammates. Oh. Do do something for high-performing people around you, or low-performing, but do something for the other agents in the company. Like if you, John Hill mm -hmm. brought me a little, um, I think it's like, I'm not sure what it's made of, just a little metal three monkeys. Mm -hmm. Hear no evil, speak, uh, speak no, uh, see no evil, speak no evil. And mm -hmm. it was the nicest thing ever. He didn't need to do that, no. but he saw it. He mm -hmm. knows that I love those monkeys, mm -hmm. and he gave it to me. Like that is a Fred moment. Mm -hmm. Like that was very personal to me. Um, and again, of course, friends and strangers, anybody you possibly can. So number three, be the difference. Uh, a little thought and reflection. So add value to whatever we do for others. You know, kind of make time in our schedule to determine how we can turn ordinary actions into extraordinary actions. So what can we do with every interaction today, Robert, from every person that complains about their email, that wants to get their hard drive replaced? How can you just make them feel fabulous? You know what I mean? I'm just, you don't have to say, answer it. I'm just saying. <laughs> Take an ordinary and making it extraordinary. Mm -hmm. I will tell you that when people come in and pick up their uh, computers from Robert, they're pretty happy. Because mm -hmm. they just saved them like two grand, you know, having to go out and buy a new one. So. 
Um, so it's kind of suggests like be an like an athlete preparing for a pregame mm -hmm. or a competition or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of difference are you going to make today? So, um, what else do we have? Uh, he was talking. Another example is he went to this speaker went to speak at a very large sales organization, and the vice president of sales is a motorhead. He's all into cars and classic cars, and he has a subscription to, you know, some classic car magazine or whatever. And so does the author. And he found out the author did, and so he went over and sh showed him a picture. He had just ordered him a subscription to the same magazine and said, "I hope you enjoy it for the next year." So little things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and by the so Sonia, anything else you want to add? I would love. I always like to hear Sonia's input or anybody else on the call about Fred moments that you guys have had, and some of them are big Fred moments. Big ones, you know. I mean, I, I was talking to. I don't know if you remember when we did the business planning about ten years ago at Palm Springs, and we wrote three notes, and you had to write three notes to people that had made an impact on your life. And I remember it was Bianca had written a letter to a lady that she kind of got Bianca got kicked out of her house because I guess she was quite the mm. the pain in the ass when she mm -hmm. was like eighteen years old. <laughs> and this lady bought her an outfit for a job interview. Aww. And she ended up getting that job and it launched her, gave her a life and a career and all that Aww. sort of stuff. So she wrote a letter to that. Um, another one, I mean, there were some pretty moving letters that went mm -hmm. down that day acknowledging people that had had those Fred moments with people, but big Fred moments, you know. That's good. Anything else, Sonia? Well, it's, it's, it's a lot about just paying it forward. Mm -hmm. You know, just, I, I think that when Courtney and I went out for lunch once, and some gentleman decided to buy our lunch and he was gone before we even knew he had done it. It's because you guys And are so that was pretty. the first time I done it for us. Yeah. But that, you know, those little things can make a person's day. I, I also think your note writing agents are really good about writing those notes. And if it's just thinking of you, that can make somebody's day. It's it's the little things. It's not necessarily the big things that we look at, those are obviously noticed, but it's those little things we do every, th every day of paying up forward. Right, right, I agree, I agree. I'm actually just remembering a couple of things right now, I'm getting all sappy over here. Mm. Yeah, I might even save a couple of them for the mid-year, but a couple of those okay. things that, pretty big over the years. So, um, thank you, Sonia. Um, and just remember this, that if you're trying to build a relationship with somebody, you know, using Fred Moments or Fred Factors or whatever, but remember that, the quality of a relationship is directly related to the time that you invest in it too. So it's not just, you know, and that goes for clients too. Don't, don't, don't keep those conversations one minute. Build those relationships. Mm -hmm. Find out about them. Ask questions. Do all those sort of things. And that's what we're leading to now. Um, and uh, there was another one that he talked about, a doctor, a pediatrician that he went to. And his son was three years old. And the son was scared to be going to the doctor's office mm -hmm. and all that stuff. But the doctor actually sat down on the floor with him, and he was eating pretzels and said, can I get one of your pretzels? Mm. And made this relationship you know, with, with the three-year-old and stuff. But I do want to acknowledge somebody who's not on the call, but from the minute my boys were born, John Doerr in the Canyon Lake office, Aww. every single time I came into that office with my boys, he would take one of them, and he always kept a stash of animal crackers or uh -huh. whatever, and he would take them back, and he always would talk to them and hang out with them. They'd be gone for like 10 minutes. I'm like, dude, Aww. what's going on? And they'd be running around the office doing all this different stuff, and he'd be carrying them. And still to this day, at 21 years old, my boys remember John Doerr. Yeah. Aww. Do you know what I mean? He's they, such a nice they man. They remember him because he was so good to them when they were little uh -huh. kids. You know, I, and I, I just, that's a, that's a Fred factor right mm -hmm. there, you know, and so something I, don't, I won't forget. All right, so oh, we're doing good here. So here's the seven B's of relationship building. You ready? Uh -huh. I want you to build some relationships other than with Nathan, Adam, okay? With okay. other people too. Number one, be real. Be authentic. Mm -hmm. We all know that one. Uh, this is a lot of the how to win friends stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, number two is be interested, you know, and not in yourself and other people. <laughs> Excuse okay. me? Okay. <laughs> uh, number, th number three, uh, be a better listener. So be authentic, be interested, be a better listener. And I, I would say that there are a lot of people that are in this, in this business, particularly in real estate, that are the kings and queens of that. And that is asking questions. And I remember I was out with somebody this weekend and I was watching them and I don't think they asked one person one question and they talked the entire time in every group they were in and never shut up. Mm. You know what I mean? But maybe they were nervous or just they haven't been out enough, among people enough. But mm. you know what, I mean that, that's true, that's important. And yes, I'm picking on you and you know who you are. Uh, next is be empathetic. Um, understand how people feel and try to relate with their situations and how they're feeling at that time. Of course, next is be honest and 
say what you'll do and do what you say. So mm -hmm. be real and authentic, be interested, be a better listener, be empathetic, be honest. The next one is um, be helpful. And the example in this one is one that I have to take credit for that we're really, really good at, um, is when you see somebody taking a picture and you can tell like they're a family member or part mm -hmm. of that group, take the camera from them and mm -hmm. have them jump in the picture too because they may end up treasuring that picture. Mm -hmm. I think when somebody's taking a picture and you help them out, mm -hmm. I think that's a Fred Factor moment. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, so that's be helpful. And the last one is be prompt. And don't waste people's time by being late, um, mm -hmm. which you guys know how I feel about people being late. Like I cannot stand it. Agreed. It's such an oxymoron, isn't it? I'm never late. <laughs> Am I ever late? Never. Not to your standards, no. <laughs> the show starts at 9. If I'm here at 8.59. You're not late. I'm not late. All right. OK, just everyone, he really enjoyed himself making me uncomfortable for days. So I'm just getting even. What do you mean? <laughs> You just said over and over again, I'm just doing this because it makes you feel, you're so awkward. It makes you feel so awkward. Hey. <laughs> so now I'm trying to make you feel as awkward as possible. Uh -huh. Hey, he has to be here at least five minutes or you know, early, otherwise he doesn't get that coffee and make it. Ah, that's, that's true. true. Which is a Fred moment. I was just going to say. Oh, yeah. Robert is the biggest Fred Robert in the makes company, coffee for every morning. He is. He, he makes goes sure. He goes gets coffee creamer. Yummy creamers. Robert, we do love you and we appreciate you. Just we do. You make a, a coffee moment. every you, morning. You, we do. Every morning. just as much for me, though, too. <laughs> but that's okay. All right. You don't need to make a full pot for all of us. Yeah. I mean, uh, for yourself. All right. So now we're going to talk about continually creating value because we only got okay. like three minutes left. So there are two types. Andrew Carnegie said this, right? You know Carnegie, right? One of the billionaire industrialists of our time. Like Carnegie They're, Hall? Uh, Carnegie Steel, you know, all that sort of okay. stuff. All the How to Win Friends books and all that stuff. Oh, okay. So sorry, sorry. There are two types of people who never achieve very much in their lifetime. Okay. Hopefully this isn't one of you guys. Okay. One is the person who won't do what he or she is told to do. And the other is the person who does no more than what he or she is told to do. <laughs> The bare minimum. Mm. Like when we ask Adam to do something and he doesn't want to do it, uh -huh. the work that we get from uh -huh. the, the things we ask him to do when he doesn't want to do it. I, I, I hate to say it's true, but baby, it's true. It is true. When Adam doesn't want to do hey, something, I just learned get. today, if you're not having fun, it's not worth it. <laughs> the bare minimum. Um, so, and they ask a restauranteur the secret to his success. Mm -hmm. And this was a very famous restauranteur. And I wish I could remember his name. Sorry. He said that he learned in Europe, a European restaurant that he worked in, to make everything as good as it could be, whether it's a complicated dish or mm -hmm. a side dish. Mm -hmm. And he says, so if you make french fries, make sure they're the best french fries in the world. Mm -hmm. Whatever you do, put your all into it. Um, and uh, I like that one. I thought that mm -hmm. was pretty good, too. Yeah. Um, all right, almost done. How are we doing? OK, we got two minutes. A crash course in adding value. So tell the truth. Yes. We talked about that one. Practice personality power. Um, and he was talking about, he went into a restaurant, and the server was just okay with him. Oh, yeah. But there was a busboy that was bouncing around, giving mm -hmm. people water, filling up their butters, doing yeah. all these different things, and literally came over to him on the way and said, would you like some more water before you head out? And he goes, and by the way, we really appreciate you coming in today. The busboy said that. And he said, so that was the one that made an impact on me, the mm -hmm. busboy. Um, and pay attention to appearances also, and, and he talked about that. People that take care of themselves and do things aesthetically pleasing and your marketing piece is looking good, mm -hmm. all that sort of stuff. Aesthetics, attraction through artistry is important, of Ooh, course. I like how you worded that. Very yeah, nice, well, very nice. Yeah, I mean, you get it, right? And also, meet needs in advance. Mm -hmm. So you know your neighbor's going out of town. Hey, I'm happy to pick up your mail for you if you want over the next week or two. Mm -hmm. you know, no problem. So something like that. You know, mm -hmm. add people in, a time, in, in time. So basically, um, that is the first half of Oof. the Fred Factor. That was a lot. What did you guys think? That's good. I, I like it. it. Robert liked it? Robert doesn't like any of this stuff. I know. Congratulations. Thank you. I just you. brought back memories, like back in the day kind of memories. Of people doing nice things for you? My biggest friend was a teacher named Ken Hunter when I was a kid. Um, throughout high school, he was kind of like a guitar mentor, and he also taught the media production class. Um, and he was one of the people that encouraged me in my IT field when I was learning about it. And uh, when I was taking my college training to get my degree to be an IT technician, um, he like came up to me one day and he goes, he goes, you find that job you're looking for yet while you're working? I'm like, no. And he literally had me hop in the car and drove me down to CompUSA and came in with me and he went up to the manager and he goes, you're stupid if you don't hire this kid right here. Aww. <laughs> and that day the guy gave me um, an application and 
two days later, I was there for an interview, and then I had a job there working at uh, CompUSA across the street from Best Buy. Oh, nice. Did you, ever, did you ever thank him for doing that? Yeah, and still to this day, when he calls me, I go over and I help him with what he needs, his IT needs. Mm. He's 80-something years old now, and he's a retired veteran, and he lives in Del Mar. Aww. Aww. That's awesome. That's a great story. Careful, you're going to get us still all sappy. Still my guitar mentors. And he's still your guitar mentor. Right on. Did you think of a couple memories too, Adam, of people that have helped you along the way? Oh, of course. Yeah, and Jenny? Mm-hmm. Good. Well, hopefully everybody did. And be that person. Yeah, be that person. That's the theme for today. So it is exactly 10 o'clock, and I'm going to turn it over to one of my favorite Before ladies. Before we go, though, uh -oh. uh, yes. do we need to bring up the next Monday motivation schedule? Or? No, let's see what happens. Okay. I think we'll talk about and that. And Wednesday, okay. Wednesday, 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 we are taking our, where oh. your beautiful Cole Binker blue shirt. Not this blue. Not mm -hmm. that blue. No. That's Margaret not it. Um, yes. But look at the people on, on the Zoom thing. You'll see the blues. Men in black suits. We're going to take our picture. It's going to be yes. so good. Yes, Wednesday. And Please be here for that. It would mean a lot. Coming up. That's it's, your Fred moment for me. Yeah. Okay? And for it's going to be agents. great. Yeah. Please be at the company photo in the sales meeting at the lodge on Wednesday. So, yeah. all right, I'm going to turn it over to my favorite lady. One last thing. One yes. last thing. I'm lady. so sorry. Guys, Good. please do us a favor on Facebook. Leave a comment talking about your Fred moments because it's sweet. We like to get to know you better and it helps the algorithm and keeps us all doing well and happy. But that's how we get to know these people by and their comments and their you, Instagrams yeah. and stuff. And yeah. I'm not seeing our beautiful Teresa, by the way. Yeah, really? she's not well, on, so I'm going to hand her uh, back. I was going to say, Teresa is not here because she won the lottery. Uh, and by one the lottery, I mean she has jury duty today. So I'm oh, covering her. So, Michael, okay. are you going to fill in for us, buddy? Yes, I am. All right. Hey, Michael, Michael. Wysocki, you are on, buddy. Thank you. Perfect. All right. So let me go ahead and share.